You know, I was just thinking about all the dangers we face in the world today, just being uh, human beings, being people, and people all over the world face the same dangers. That's true. I know, you, you might think the, the greatest danger we face is war, but it isn't. It's not a nuclear explosion or anything like that, Tommy. You know what the greatest danger is? Simply overpopulation. You, you know... That's right, isn't it? Yeah, you know every... You know... No, it's not. Not... <laughs> What do you mean it's not? Because you know something? This is a... You said overpopulation is the biggest problem. Well, I feel it is. Tom. Well, see, the, what I think is that... See, every, every person, every one person has two parents. That's right. And all, those two parents have four parents. That's right. And those four have eight parents. Those That's eight right. have 16. Those 16 ha parents have uh, 32 parents. 32 parents. So you can see that the population is tapering off. Like <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen... This gentleman here is one of the phenomena of the world. He looks no older than Mr. Sean, and yet he is 2,000 years old. Is that true, sir? Yes. You want to see my driver's license? No, no. We, we have it authenticated. The Mayo Clinic has checked you out and said that you are 2,000. Sir, what has kept you alive for 2,000 years? When I'll go on an airplane, if I'll go on an airplane, I'll never sit in the first two seats or the last two seats from an airplane. You mean not sitting in the first two or the first last two seats? Two in the last two has kept you alive? I don't understand that. Why? Has that because kept you alive? Because if the plane, unfortunately, should take a flop out from the sky, you're going to go down with it and break your foot. Right? <laughs> but yes. But if, if the plane, as you say, flops out of the sky, everybody in all the seats will break their feet. I mean, at least. Yeah, let me amend that. Any seat is no good. In other words, you're afraid to fly in an airplane. On the nosy. <laughs> I see, but why? Because if the good Lord meant men to fly, he would have given them tickets, right? <laughs> so I've always been interested in the, origin, in the origin of words. For instance, a simple word like cheese. Where did that come cheese from? Cheese is a lovely story how we get the word cheese in our, in our vernacular. In the year 28 dash, there was an old farmer, and he, a uh, gentleman, came to his land and said, I'm so thirsty, may I have a little dipper milk? Ah. And he said, certainly, go over to the barrel. He not knowing that the barrel of milk had soured, ah. see? So this poor beggar man came to the barrel and opened up from the top and looked in and looked down and went, cheese! <laughs> cheese! That's, that's the word how it That's how the word I cheese see. came into it's being. It's very onomatopoetic. Yes, and that's the truth. Yes. yes. Now we don't use that anymore. No, we no. Now we go in, we say to the grocery, I'll have cheese. You don't go, cheese! You scared the grocery. <laughs> There's a custom that has come down through the ages. Where did it start? People applauding when they like something. This, this is, this is not. Did people always do that in the old this days? Is very sophisticated. This little. What did you do in a caveman? When we were excited, we did something primitive and natural. I mean, when we were exposed to our wonderment, we really reacted. I mean, it was. A... But not like this. No, not like that. Well, how did you react? Uh, did you do something? You do something, and I'll show you the old-fashioned. Applause. You you sing a little song. I'll show you how when we liked something, we really went for it. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You sing a little song. A high note. I'll give you a high note. A high note. Ah! Did you see that? Yes. Did you see what did you do? Natural reaction. Ah! Ah! Oh! People actually hit themselves. Oh in the face. boy! Wow! That hurts though. Yeah, you're better than hurts now. <laughs> but people applaud. Right. And listen, it was a dangerous thing. We could not continue to react to wonderments like that. Because when we had a big star, you know, like Sammy Davis Sr. would come and play the game. Way back then. Yes. You know, not Junior, the old one. Yes. We couldn't, we would hurt ourselves when he was terrific. So Murray, the wise one. Yes. Murray, who was he smart? What Murray, did he do? Was smart. Murray said, folks, pull your faces out of the applause. Pull your faces out. How and do you said, do what do you mean? You he went terrific and terrific. And you face out of the applause, see? That's fascinating. That's how Murray did well, it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. You don't want them to applaud by, by doing that. No, don't hurt your faces, folks. Just a simple little clapping will suffice. Thank, thank you. Very much. I'm tired. I couldn't sleep last night. Really? Why? Because the shade was up. Well, why didn't you pull it down? Oh, I couldn't reach way across the street. <laughs> Honey, I know black is beautiful, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> what do you think of George Wallace running for president? Well, here's the way I look at it. <laughs> you think Wallace should run again? Yeah, and the next time I hope they catch him. In the hollow. 
at night on a rooftop with dark glasses on, eating a pig's foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know how many black brothers are fighting for freedom in Vietnam? Yeah, almost as many as here. <laughs> Did you hear where the mayor of Los Angeles finally solved the smog problem? No kidding. What did he do? He put the street signs up in Braille. <laughs> Tell us, sir, would you like to be the first Negro to go to the moon? No, I'd like to be the first Negro to come back. <laughs> well, what do you think of the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan? I'd like to wish the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan a five-car accident with no survivors, a slow ambulance with full flat tires and no spare, a junkie doctor with an $800 a day habit with an orangutan on his back, and a rusty scalpel in his hand as he's operating on the Grand Wizard in the hospital that's burning down on top of the operating table, and frozen fire hydrants from Alabama to Nova Scotia. And if they ever thaw out muddy water in his coffin, other than that, good luck, and made lightning strike him in the heart, three 374 times just before some hungry, hydrophobia-filled possums chew through his expensive coffin for something strange to eat. Amen. I don't mind admitting that I'm a Western movie fan, but not any Western. I like, in particular, the ones that involve Indians. They were good fighters, and if they were, they must have been well-organized. Couldn't have been as chaotic as it looks in the movies with one old chief, many moon come Choctaw, <laughs> and everybody else naked. <laughs> there had to be intermediate authority. There must have been Indian sergeants. No army can make it without those tough, veteran, battle-hardened sergeants, and the Indians were no exception. <laughs> All right, all the tall guys over by the trees. <laughs> Fat guys down behind the rocks. And you with the beads, out of line. <laughs> all right, knock off the horse play. Come on, knock off the horse play. You guys over there playing with the horse, will you knock it off? <laughs> all right, now, you've all been given a piece of birch bark and a feather dipped in eagle's blood. We want you to ride on the birch bark in the upper right-hand corner. That's the upper right-hand corner. That's your arrow hand. You write your name. Last name first, first name last. If you got a middle initial, please include that, such as Wolf, Howling W. <laughs> now, a lot of you have been asking about promotion. You'd like to make brave second class? Get another scar on your arm? Well, I'm happy to say the results of your early tests have come through and you're doing beautifully. Burning settlers' homes, everybody passed. Imitating a coyote, everybody passed. Sneaking quietly through the woods, everybody passed, except limping ox. <laughs> However, limping ox is being fitted with a pair of corrective moccasins. <laughs> and he'll be up and dancing in no time at all. Now, there are two other areas on which you will be tested. Running down the hill yelling like a nut <laughs> and leaping into the gorge, which is considered to be the tougher of the two. A lot of fellas like to save leaping into the gorge for last. A couple other announcements for you here. There'll be a rain dance Friday night. <laughs> weather permitting. The fertility rites have been called off due to the recent cold wave. Ah. <laughs> It'll be a massacre tonight at 9 o'clock. We'll meet down by the bonfire, dance around a little, and move out. Now, this is the third straight night we've attacked the fort. However, tonight it will not be as easy. Tonight there will be soldiers in the fort. <laughs> Happy to say I'll be leading the massacre. I'll be running down front. You'll see me. I'm the one that's on fire. <laughs> and your uniform of the day, it's a formal massacre. There'll be a dance going on at the fort. You want your Class A summer learn cloth? <laughs> Two green stripes over the eye, no feather. Arms are blue, legs are red, chest is optional. <laughs> 
Yes, Prancing Antelope. No, you can't put any purple on your eyelids. Don't you the guy with the beads? Get out of line, would you please? It's funny, but you could know a person for a long time and yet never really know them fully. It always comes as a shock when you suddenly meet them somewhere where you never expected to meet them. We'd like to show you a few examples. For instance, here's a couple who spend day after day in a dull routine office situation, but suddenly they meet under exciting circumstances. <laughs> Him. Any masher who jumps out of a dark alley and tries to kiss me, I'll remember. It just isn't safe for a beautiful and enticing woman to walk the streets these days. I can still feel his hot breath and his vicious grip as he grabbed me, his eyes inflamed with desire at the sight of me. Bring him out. Show your face, you brute! Mr. Frisbee! Miss Butterworth. Well, fancy, fancy meeting, meeting you here. here. <laughs> so you're the one who attacked me. <laughs> My, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> well, for me too, you know, I'm glad it wasn't a stranger because I'm shy around strangers. <laughs> well, this is just amazing. I you at the office every single day and you're the last guy I'd ever expect to jump out of a dark alley and grab me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just jump at anything that goes by. <laughs> I just can't get over it. You a masher. <laughs> I mean, at the office, you're such a nothing. <laughs> well, you can't always tell a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> You do this sort of thing every night, Mr. Frisbee? Well, every night except Mondays. Oh. I stay home and watch I've Got a Secret. Watch it? You should be on it. <laughs> They'd never guess in a million years. <laughs> I don't know, though. I, I still can't be sure you're the masher. Oh, I, I take my word for it. I'm the masher. Now, I, I'd like to take your word for it, but I'd have to have a positive identification. I, I tell you what, put your arms around me the way you did last night. Well, I think I just, that was uh, like uh, that. Uh, no, you know, actually, I do believe this hand was around my uh, uh, waist and this hand was on my shoulder. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it, was, it was like that. <laughs> that was it. Yes, it's beginning to feel familiar. <laughs> <laughs> only, only you held me a lot tighter. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now, mash me. <laughs> right on the mouth. Uh. Now, do you believe that I'm the masher? Yes, but I'm, I'm not going to press charges. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but am I ever going to see you again? Tomorrow night, 11 o'clock. Where? Same alley. <laughs> So you can see how two shy, inhibited people suddenly find romance. Now let's take these same two people. They live on the same street and every day take the same bus to work, work in the same building, pass each other five times a week on the way to lunch, but never say hello to one another because they feel they just have nothing in common. What a lovely surprise it must be for two such people to discover they both belong to the same secret organization. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Frisbee? Miss Butterworth. Well, well fancy, fancy meeting you, you here. <laughs> hey, why are y'all been over like that? Oh, I'm wearing a contour sheet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big turnout tonight. <laughs> What's the occasion? Oh, haven't you heard? It's very exciting. They're filming our meeting tonight, and they're going to use it on a detergent commercial. Oh, I get it, because our sheets are whiter than white, huh? No, you silly thing, because we are. Well, 
That was an illustration of how two people who thought they had nothing in common discovered that they not only belong to the same private club, but have the same laundry problem. <laughs> now let's take these uh, same two people and see how they would react if they met under a different set of circumstances. What would happen if they unexpectedly bumped into each other in a strange and exotic land, thousands of miles from home? Just a sec, I'll be right there. Mr. Frisbee, is that you? Is that you, Miss Butterworth? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fancy meeting you here, yes. <laughs> well, Mr. Frisbee, you look so different. <laughs> well, I've been out here in Africa two years now, <laughs> teaching the natives the ways of the white man. <laughs> How'd you get here? Did you fly in Big Silver Bird? Uh, no, I came by plane. Oh, yeah, that's what they call it. <laughs> that's just to ward off the evil spirits. <laughs> oh, gee, the weather here seems wonderful. Oh, yes, it is. It is. How long has it been like this? Oh, I'd say about a week. Mm -hmm. Exactly a week. Oh. Well, ever since I sacrificed the, pi the pig to the um, Gumbubu, the rain god. <laughs> Gumbubu? <laughs> Yeah, you see, white goddess, uh, if I don't make a sacrifice to uh, Gambubu, the rain god, uh, 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 Gambaba, the sun god, see, Gambubu, the rain god, I'll s swallow up Gambaba, the sun god. <laughs> Kills the whole weekend. <laughs> oh, well, is there anything else I ought to know? Well, uh, yes, watch out for, uh, for Gumbawau. Gumbawa. Yeah, that's the head shrinker. Oh. <laughs> he has a weird sense of humor. <laughs> what, what do you mean, weird? Do you remember Walter at the office? Yes. <laughs> Say hi to Walter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, travel can be broadening. But the truth is, it is so hard to get to know the real person hidden behind the trappings of civilized living. And it is a wondrous thing when two people can at last tear away those trappings and get, well, get to really know who they really are. Now, it can happen anywhere, on a cruise, at a party, or even at a favorite local resort. <laughs> Miss Butterworth? Didn't recognize you without your clothes on. <laughs> I didn't recognize you without your Nixon button. <laughs> oh, I'm wearing it. It's right over. <laughs> Miss Butterworth. Yes, I, Mr. Frisbee. I think it's time that you called me Harold. <laughs> You can call me Agnes. <laughs> uh, do you think we can see more of each other? <laughs> You're putting me on. Suck it to me? <laughs> Thank you. The particular thing I'd like to do is... Um, I think dedicated to a small but uh, brave group of men who, who daily risk their lives that, that others might live. And uh, as some of you may have guessed, I'm talking about America's driving instructors. <laughs> I'd like, I like to present a, a day in the life of a driving instructor. And you're going to have to picture, if you will, this is a car. Uh, I'm the driving instructor. 
and seated next to me is a woman driver. <laughs> hello, hello there. Well, let's see here now. Um, your your name is Mrs. Webb. Is that is that correct? Uh huh. And uh, oh, uh, Mrs. Webb, now you've had uh, one lesson here already, ha haven't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you happen to remember the the instructor's name on that? Mr. Adams. What would that be? A D. Uh, oh wait, wait. I'm sorry. Now here it is, Mr. Adams. You know, um, it really might facilitate things if I just sort of read ahead a bit to kind of familiarize myself with the. Um, uh, <laughs> how, um, how, how fast uh, were, you, were you going when Mr. Adams jumped from the car? <laughs> seven, seven, 75. <laughs> I see. Where, where, where was that now? In, in, in your driveway, huh? <laughs> had, had, had Mr. Adams covered uh, starting the car? He, he, got, he got that far, did he? All right, you want to, you want to start the car and we'll, we'll pull out into the, into the stream of traffic. Uh, what, what's, what's the first thing we're going to do uh, before we pull out into traffic? Well, what, what, what did Mr. Adams do uh, be, before he let you pull out into traffic? Well, in addition uh, to praying, let's say. <laughs> no, no what, what, I, what I had in mind was, was checking the rear view mirror. You see, we, we always, always want to check our... <laughs> Please, uh, please don't cry, Mr. Webb. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't mean to shout at you like that. It's <laughs> just, just that there was, there was this truck, you see? Okay. Uh... All right, your, your lane is clear now. You want to pull out into the stream of traffic? Uh, same to you, fella. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, yeah, turn in the street right here. Uh, there's a, a driving area not too far away, and... Uh, I think it might build up your confidence. Yeah, turn, turn right here. That's the way. Build up your confidence and, um... Well, now, that, that was my fault again, you see. Yeah, I, I'm in at the corner. <laughs> not not, not onto this, this man's lawn, you see. Uh, sir? Sir? Sir, would you mind turning off your sprinkler for just... Uh, sir, isn't he... N newly seated, is, is, is that right, huh? <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of always the way it goes, though, isn't it, sir? Well, I mean, it seems you, you no sooner get the lawn in, you know, then bang, somebody's got to come along. <laughs> oh, actually, it isn't that darn funny. I guess no, sir. <laughs> uh, you, want, you want to back out, Miss Webb? Yeah. Th thank you very much, sir. We, we certainly, uh, we certainly uh, back out, Miss Webb. He's going for the hose. <laughs> Uh, M Mrs. Webb, um, now we, we just, uh, we just backed into someone. Uh, do, uh, do you recall at all my, my talking about the rearview mirror and, and we were gonna... The, the red light blinded you. The, the flashing red light. <laughs> on the car you hit. <laughs> Yeah, she was, she was, uh, she was just telling me about it, officer. <laughs> no, actually, actually, you're right, I suppose. I, I should have had her signal. Um, see, I, I don't know what the signal is uh, for coming off someone's lawn. That was, that was... <laughs> I, I, uh, Miss Webb, I'm gonna have to go with the officers uh, to the, the police station. It, uh, it turns out they've been uh, following us for the last uh, four or five blocks, and, uh, and, and they don't believe it, you see, and they, <laughs> they, they wanna get someone. Bef before I go, you'd, you'd like to get my name. Well, uh, my name is, is Frank Dexter. Why, why do you ask? <laughs> you, you, want, you want to be sure and ask for me next time? <laughs> Come on, you're all invited. Come Let's on. Go. Tell, tell me, sir, what do you think we ought to do about Vietnam? 
Well, I, uh, 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 well, I, 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 I guess I, 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 I think we should de 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 escalate. Sure, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> I've seen the fall fashions, and nothing new is coming out. The old things are coming out further. <laughs> The Hardy and Pioneers really knew how to dress. Are you kidding? Buckle shoes, white silk stockings, satin breeches, ruffled shirts? You're right, maybe the buckle shoes were a bit much. <laughs> Don't let this get around, but I hear Hugh Hefner flunked his bunny test. <laughs> I'd like you to meet Mr. Hugh Hefner. Oh, Mr. Hefner. Harry says I look like something out of your Playboy centerfold. Yes, uh, the staple. <laughs> oh, Hef, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. <laughs> In my college, 40% of the students use alcohol and 30% use drugs. It's not a record to be proud of, but we have some fantastic football games. You know, I'd get married in a minute, but I'm shy, and, you know, I can't find any clean pajamas. Pajamas? Pajamas? I'm all for school busing. I've learned so much more in a school bus than I'll ever learn in a school. <laughs> George Wallace isn't really opposed to personal liberty and individual freedom. He just doesn't want them to fall into the wrong hands. <laughs> well, Mr. Rosmenko, it's been over a year now since you made your escape from behind the Iron Curtain. How do you like America? Well, it's uh, very excitational for it to be immigrationated, but uh, it's one thing, it's all the criticalizations from yeah. the people if they don't like it here, why don't they go fly a boat? True. There's a new southern margarine out called Imperial Wizard, but you can only use it on white bread. I hear the Pope is so upset because of the fuss about the pill. He has Excedrin headache number nine. <laughs> We'll return right after this message. Since I started using your detergent in my bath, all my things come out brighter. <laughs> this isn't really a TV show. It's national group therapy. 